Hi there. My name is Jerry Tyson, and over the last two years, I've built this log cabin that you see behind me for less than $10,000. And I want to show you how I did it. So one of the biggest things you have to understand is that when I don't work, I don't make money. So if I'm not making any money, I also can't be spending money. I've had to reduce my outgoing money to the point that if I don't go to work tomorrow, it doesn't matter. It's the only way that I could build this and take the time to do it. No car payments, no credit cards, um, no house payment. I do, I'm, I'm be upfront with you, I am not an off-grid guy. I have electric and I even have gas here at the house. My outgoing expenses to live here is roughly 150 to 200 a month for my, 200 is stretching it for my gas bill, my electric bill. So, so it doesn't take much when you live simple. Food, um, I eat here a little bit, but my 85 year old mother lives local and I have a sister who is widowed and a brother who my mom lives with, and we all share meals every night. So it's kind of a pitch it in type of deal. What, that is the key to doing something like this, because if you wanna try yourself and see what you're made out of, pick on a project like this all by yourself, because it is not, you're gonna find out what your work ethics are like, because it is daylight to after dark, full go all the time. I even got to the place where I had to nap midday so that I could get enough. I got two days in one while I was building this thing. So, and then the other part of this is I am not located out in the middle of the wilderness somewhere. I'm actually in a community. I'll walk you out back real quick and show you my little community because I sit up on a hill and I can see it down below me. Okay, so behind me, is the little village that I live in. It's Lisbon, Ohio, and I am part of this community. And when I say part of this community, like I donate my time to the community, I try to help people in the community, and they do the same for me. Um, in this little community in September, we have what's called the Johnny Appleseed Festival, and it's celebrating the life of Johnny Appleseed, and it's a way for community to come together and, you know, get junk food and and listen to music and and i am the face of that festival people don't come to see me though they come for johnny appleseed kids just just they come from all over to get their picture taken with johnny appleseed and and it's just great being a part of a community and simplifying my life has allowed me to do that more so although the cabin is great i tell you what those two days of that festival is the best days of my year just for people to flock in and i understand they're not coming to see me they're coming to see johnny appleseed but yet he's 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 larger than life i went to a a play down at the school for the kids and because they were singing a song about johnny appleseed and one of the parents got a hold of me and said that her daughter said to her i can't believe someone as famous as johnny appleseed took the time to come watch us perform. And I tell you what, that hits me right here. Because we have an obligation to the children. We have an obligation to other people to, to be there for them. And, and that's kind of what this whole living simpler means to me. You know, by simplifying life, you know, so many people, and that has got cold real quick. So many people live their life strapped paycheck to paycheck. That's where the root of all anger comes from. You know, when you can't make enough money to make ends meet and you struggle. And I just think that if people would learn to live within their means, and that might be building a $10,000 log cabin and just being happy with what it is. Okay, so we can start here. Logs. I bought an old log cabin um, that was built in the 1800s 
for the widow and her children of a man that died in War of 1812. The log cabin was in awful shape and was about ready to be tore down and cut into flooring when I come along and was able to get the logs and save it. I paid $1,000 for the logs. So $1,000 for the logs. All of the barn siding sells really expensive in antique shops. I got lucky. Went on Facebook one day, Facebook Marketplace, and I bought all of the, the barn siding, including everything that you're gonna see up on the rafters. I bought all that barn siding for $200. That also includes the barn door that's on the inside that was built out of that same siding. It also includes the barn tracking. It was laying there, the guy gave it to me too. The ladder that goes up into the loft, all of the center hand-hewn rungs were with that. I built the two side rails. All of the other wood that's here, like the, the soffit and fascia, um, that is flooring from the old log cabin. The fascia on this side is fresh oak that I milled myself and then, and then I put a spray on it to make it look old. The same with the siding on this side. That's all red oak that, that I milled and then sprayed the vinegar and, and steel wool solution on it to change the color so that it looks oxidized. So no money in that other than I did buy a mill. In my pricing that I'm doing, I'm not putting the price of that mill in there because that thing can easily be used for six months and sold. And I bought mine right before COVID. Oh, I could turn around and sell that thing tomorrow and it would be gone for more than I paid for it. So, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna quote that part, that part of it in there. Windows, these windows, um, I paid $35 for all of them at an antique shop. Probably the most expensive part of this entire project was the foundation. It's got a full eight foot plus high basement, 12 inch concrete blocks, filled solid with concrete. Foundation for the fireplace, of course. Forgot that in one of the videos, that was a mistake. Foundation for the fireplace, concrete floor. That was my most expensive part. Now remember, when I'm giving you these prices, I was the labor, every bit of it. I didn't pay anybody. There were times I had kids come help me a little bit and friends come over and help a little bit, a, a day or so here and there. But for the most part, I worked alone. So no labor cost. I probably had $4,000 in the basement, in the material for the basement. So that was my most expensive part of this entire project. Front door was the center support beam for the log cabin. So I milled that zero money in that because that's all part of the thousand dollars that I paid for the original log cabin. Uh, light fixtures, Roger sale. Um, I think I paid 30 bucks for the light fixtures. So not really anything people waste more than that on soda popping. Door hinges, if you could see them, um, $120 on eBay. They're authentic hinges, hand forged from the early days. So important to have those big hinges. Potbelly stove, I paid $500 for. I am a chimney sweep. All the piping and stuff was salvaged from another job that was taken out. Chimney as well, so nothing in the chimney. And there is, there's triple wall chimney above that tin at the top. All of my roof joists came from the neighbor's property, same place I've been getting all the trees from I paid him $500 for any tree that I wanted off the property. So total cost for all of the trees, not just for one tree, total cost for all of the trees. He sold them to me for $500 and he felt guilty about it. So we can all tell him he's fine. It wasn't too much. Um, so $500 in all those, I'll take you up closer so you can see them. Um, for all my floor joists and stuff, I think I had $1,200 in, in all of the floor joists. I'm trying to think of anything else up here that might have cost me money. I mean, you can, you can counter in some nails and some screws and, and those things, you know, a couple hundred bucks max. Electric. I do have electric. I do have a TV. TV I had. Electric. Like I said, I don't live off grid. I live cheap. Give you a quick look at this side. I'll show this better when I get ready to do the flooring and and all that stuff. And again, I do live here. 
Um, I live cheaply. Furniture was bought at a secondhand store. My mother made the quilt for me out of um, my old clothing from when I was younger. So all my all my t-shirts, all my shirts, all my blue jeans that were wore out, the blanket was made out of those. Let's go up to the loft. Um, ladder, I made the stringers for it. The steps are hand-hewn from an old barn ladder. So let's go up there. This is my next project, by the way, is finishing this loft. I'm gonna do that this week. And it's gonna be a sleeping loft for company. Okay, now we're up in the, the loft. Sorry about the wide angle lens, but it's kind of tight up here. So I have to use the super wide lens in order to show you what we're doing. Okay, so I'm about 18 feet wide and about 13 feet deep, if you count all the way to the wall, not with the fireplace. This is the stone chimney from the fireplace. Originally, I was gonna put a little pot belly stove or something up here, but honestly, being up this close to the roof, you don't need anything up here. This is the hottest place to be. So a little fire down there will keep this up here nice and toasty. So what I need to get done now is I need to finish the two walls, put a handrail up here, and get some beds made for up here. This will be a sleeping lot. Okay, now for this side. Kitchen stove, free. It was sitting on a friend of mine's front porch more than 10 years ago. And I said to her, if you ever see another one like that, I'd like to have one. And she said, just take that one, you can have it. So nothing for the stove. Fireplace, those are the original stone. Those are the original stone from the original log cabin, which was included in the $1,000 I paid for the old log cabin. I did, however, run out of stone. So from just about the roof line up, I had to get more stone. But a local, a local farmer, also one of my customers, has an old bank barn that he was taking down and he gave me the rest of the stone to finish the top of the chimney. No money, just come get them. I have a couple other projects coming up and he said I can come get as many stones as I want for them. So we'll have those for the future. So the rest of those stones didn't cost me anything either. A safe figure on what that fireplace costs me is probably four or $500. Sand and mortar, that's it, that's all I, that's all I paid for anything for that. The foundation that's under it was included in the foundation for the fire for the basement. So four or $500 for the, the fireplace. Okay, all of this cabinetry that I have built in, um, zero. <laughs> Pieces of the wood are salvaged from the old log cabin. Um, you can tell some of it's pretty rough. It's all built new, I just built it. The smaller shelving is down at the local hardware store. He just went out of business. He had a bunch of crates that glass was shipped in in the 1800s. They've been using these crates to store glass in, to cut sheets of glass since the 1800s. He gave me all those crates, but I built all my shelving and stuff out of that. This big chunk of slab is a piece of the oak tree that, that I've milled. So no cost in any of this. So really, other than that, I guess the chinking mortar is about all there is. And if, I mean, if you want to throw a high figure at that at a couple hundred bucks, um, that would be it. Electrical, I think I already hit. I think that's it. So I'll put those figures together and make sure that, that my math was right. And if not, I'll fix it. But I believe, yeah, for less than 10 to 12,000, I built this entire old cabin. <clears throat> So after taking a couple minutes to think about it, two things I missed. Excavator cost me $1,200 for a week to dig the hole. And then I also forgot the metal for the, the roofing. That cost me about $800. I got lucky on that because I bought the metal to cover up 
my log pile a year in advance so I could keep the logs dry. And the price of that metal really jumped in that period. So after everything, my grand total was $10,185. Not too bad. 